Welcome to the section on building a CRUD application. So what we're going to do here in this first lecture is take a look at the base application. So I've set up an initial CRUD app. This is going to be the basis for the entire section. And so what I want to do is pull this particular project down and start taking a look at this so we understand what's there from the get-go. What, what am I providing you first? And this is the project that we're going to use to start building on in every lecture in this section. So pull this project down, set it up, uh, open either Eclipse or IntelliJ, and let's have at it. So I've got this project set up here, and again, I just wanna kinda of walk through this. Some of this should look familiar, some, some parts of it may, may be new. So we got our basic uh, Spring Boot application here, nothing, nothing fancy going on. We have a data loader uh, that we use to go ahead and load some dummy data in here that we're gonna need. Uh, just a bunch of data to be able to run some of the examples that we're trying to do. Um, we have our two domain objects that we've been working with, author and post. Nothing crazy there. Uh, let's jump into the palm.xml so we kind of understand what pieces are a part of this project. So if we go down to the dependencies, you'll see that we have Spring Boot Starter Security. So we're gonna do some basic security in this application. So if we open up resources and application.properties, you can see that we have one particular user set up. That's all we really need at this point. Uh, just We need an admin user to be able to log into the admin side of things and, and create, uh, read, update, and delete resources. So this particular user has an admin username with a password of admin and the role of admin. So back in uh, our palm here, then we also have Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. So we're going to be using JPA in this project. Timeleaf, and then we have some of the Timeleaf extras, Spring Security 4. And this just gives us the dialects to be able to do some uh, custom tags within our, within our HTML or our Timeleaf templates to be able to do things like, is the user logged in? If they are, what is their, user, what is their role? Um, and we'll look at a couple of those in a second. And then we just have web. We're also using H2. So if we look over at the H2, uh, over at the application.properties, we have uh, the console enabled. We can go to slash console and the platform is H2. So that's all there is there. Um, let's jump into controllers. So in controllers, I have a home controller. The home controller has one request mapping. And what we're gonna do there is on our home page, we're just gonna display some static about text and then the latest post. So what is the last post that was created? And the way that we do that is we use our post service. So if we jump into our post service, our post service has a post repository and one of those post repository methods is the get latest post. And really all that does is find first by, so it's finding the first one, order by posted on date descending. So that's how we get the latest post in this particular one. So that's our home one. And then we have a post controller. And the post controller does a few things, just like listing out all the particular posts. If you wanna view a post by its slug or its alias, and then by author. So when we click on an author, we can view a bunch of posts by that author. Um, so nothing crazy there. And then I have a stub for an admin. So when we get into the CRUD stuff, we're gonna create a new controller, um, say, say an admin post or a post controller or an author controller inside of the admin package. So we're gonna kind of separate those out. Um, and then there's a few other things going on here. Let me walk you through that in a second. Let's go ahead and let's find some. Okay, so our application started. I'm just gonna refresh this page. And so when we're on the home page here, you see we have some about text and we have our latest posts where we could click into and read more about it. Um, also on the home page, we have uh, the user that is being displayed here. 
So let's kind of take a look at that. So right now off the bat, we have welcome anonymous user. And let's see how that kind of works. So the first thing you'll note, let's go ahead and close all of these. And let's go ahead and go into config and we have a security config. And you'll see that we have um, some basic security set up here. So what we're saying here is we're gonna go ahead and permit all but any route that has slash admin in it, so it starts with slash admin and then could be slash admin slash post slash admin slash authors, they need to have a role of admin or we're, we're not going to allow them to hit that page. And then we just have our login and our logout set up. So nothing crazy going on there. Now if we jump into our templates though and we look at our main layout, this is where our navigation would be. We do have something going on here. So we have welcome, and then we're using the timely security dialects that we talked about in the security section. And we're asking for the name. So by default, <clears throat> everyone is logged in anonymously. So that's why we see that welcome anonymous user. And then we see a login button because they are not logged in. So what this is saying is, are they authenticated? If so, show the logout button. Uh, if they're not authenticated, we're showing a login button. So we have a login that we could go ahead and log into the system now. So if we go to posts and lists, now we're seeing a list of all the posts. And again, we can click read more to read more. If we go to authors and lists, and we click on a particular author, we can see all of the posts by that author. So again, that's kind of the basic setup of what's going on here. One other thing that we talked about in another blog post uh, slash video um, that you may not have seen yet is how we get this to kind of show what section we're on. And the way we did that in this particular example was by using an, a custom interceptor. So we have an interceptor here and all it does is uh, after the after the the post in the post handle method here, we're basically just gonna grab whatever the controller name is and whatever the action name is, and add them to our model and view. So that way they're available to us in those templates, and we can use that controller name or that action name to do something. So in our main um, in our main template here. We're just saying, hey, is the controller name equal to home? If it is, we want you to add the, the, the class active to it. And then we do author and we do posts and admin. Again, we're going to look at more of this admin stuff when we get into the next section where we actually start to add some of this stuff. But this should give you everything you need to kind of have the base application. You can use this as a starter and instead of actually pulling the other projects right away. I'd just like you to use this and try to build the CRUD application with me as we go along.